Traditional epistemology has tended to focus on how uh, an individual comes to know uh, in a various subject matter, whether it's uh, knowledge about the world or knowledge about other minds or, or uh, knowledge about some particular subject area. So epistemology has considered about um, considered uh, such things as what resources are available to the individual in terms of evidence or experience, what sorts of individual capacities such as reasoning capacities can be brought to bear to explain things like uh, what can I know uh, if I do know something, how do I know it? Maybe if I fall short of knowledge, uh, the epistemologist would also be interested in questions such as what is reasonable for me to believe, uh, what would be unreasonable for me to believe or irrational. So the, the uh, epistemology can take a social turn where we're still interested in those things, but we are very much conscious of how the individual is uh, uh, embedded in social circumstances and how the individual relies on other people, other aspects of the social environment in order to make individual knowledge possible. So that's one aspect of social epistemology is really just to appreciate the uh, various kinds of social dependence and other kinds of social factors for the individuals coming to know, form reasonable beliefs, et cetera. But then another, uh, uh, another dimension of social epistemology is how several individuals work together to come to know things, uh, say maybe um, in the context of a research team in science or uh, some other team of uh, investigators where there's a kind of, uh, what, what might be important here is something like a uh, division of labor in terms of uh, 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 the epistemic work. Uh, that we do or the intellectual work we do. And so how does that, deliver, how does that uh, division of labor and other aspects of cooperation help uh, people to know uh, uh, in uh, cooperation with each other as opposed to just thinking about the individual as a sole inquirer? Uh, and then uh, another, yet another aspect of soci social epistemology investigates the idea of whether there might be something like group knowledge that can't be reduced to just the knowledge of individuals in the group. So it's not just that we're a team working together, but somehow we form a group that comes to know things over and above uh, anything that the individual can be said to know or uh, maybe if the individual does know, it's only because that knowledge is parasitic on what the group knows. And so just to give you a feel for uh, the, the, the sort of phenomenon that we have in mind here is sometimes we say uh, things like, uh, the United States knows that such and such, or um, uh, the American Medical Association now knows that blah, blah, blah. And so you're really talking about the, uh, the knowledge uh, of, of a group rather than an individual, one natural thing to think is, well, that's just a way of talking. The knowledge of the group can really just be reduced to the knowledge of uh, members of the group. And so this is just a, when we talk about the United States knowing something or the AMA knowing something, that's just shorthand for saying people within the government know or something like that. But there's another approach that says, no, you can't do it. You can't think of it that way. There are various reasons uh, for thinking that it's, uh, uh, you, you really do have to recognize a kind of level at the group which can't be reduced uh, to uh, knowledges, knowledge of members of the group. And so that's, th those are, th that's a feel for various things you might uh, 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 think about under the uh, uh, auspices of uh, social epistemology. Thank you very much.